All right, students, it's Wednesday, and today we're going to go over pressure in the buoyant force. This information can also give students a little bit of trouble, and we're going to go through it relatively quickly, so try to please pay as close attention as possible. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go over this do not question. You may or may not have gotten it. Okay, so it says um, a toy submarine is held under the water in a bathtub. The submarine has a weight of 0.5 newtons. A buoyant force of 0.8 newtons is exerted on the submarine. What will happen if the submarine is released? Now, you haven't learned about the buoyant force yet, and I'm actually going to teach you about it today. But I want you to think about it. If you've ever been in a bathtub or in a swimming pool, and you know if you have like a rubber ducky or a toy, and you put it underwater and you let it go, you know it usually float. It comes back to the top. Like you take a basketball or a soccer ball or something like that. If you put it underwater or a beach ball, it floats back up. Well, the, the for, there's a force that actually makes it come back up. So, for example, well, we already know that the weight of any object goes down because that's the force of gravity. So, we had a weight of 0.5 newtons going down, and then the buoyant force, which I just told you, goes up, and it's 0.8. Okay, we see that the bigger force is going up. And so, then we have to see right here what will happen. Okay, so, if you hold that submarine underwater, and this is the force that's acting on it, you can see that it's going to go up. So which answer best closest to that? Answers that. Okay, it's A, it will rise. Okay, so it won't sink, but it'll come back up to the top. Okay, and so, but we're going to talk about this more in just a moment. So first, it says here, what is Archimedes' principle? All right, so you, this is a definition that's from the um, textbook. So if you don't get it right now, make sure you go back and get it. Okay, but you probably wrote it down when I give you time to do now and to do next. But Archimedes' principle, and again, you pronounce his name Archimedes. Okay, it says, it is the buoyant force on an object is equal to the weight of the fluid the object displaces. Now, what does that really mean? Now, you've all sat in a bathtub before. At least I hope you have. Um, maybe some of you haven't, judging by okay, how you smell. No, I'm joking. Okay, so, but you know that when you sit in a bathtub, the water goes up. So that means your body is now taking the place of where some of the water was before. Okay, so that's what we mean by when you sit in a fluid or you put one object in another fluid, it displaces some of that fluid. Now, you should know that water or like any fluid has a weight to it. So for example, if you ever try to pick up a really big bucket of water, you know that it's heavy. Okay, so water has a weight to it. So what this principle is telling us is that this buoyant force that acts up on the object, the force of that object is equal to the weight of the fluid that the object displaces. So, and this helps explain some phenomena to us. So for example, maybe you've been to the beach before. Okay, and if you've been to the beach, if you ever thrown a rock out into the ocean, you know that the rock will sink. Or if you throw like a penny into a wishing well, you know that it, it sinks. But a rock or a penny doesn't weigh very much. Okay, But maybe you've also seen really big ships out in the water, like big boats. So a big boat weighs a lot more than a penny or a little rock. So why can the boat float even though it weighs millions of pounds, but a little penny that doesn't weigh very much, how come it sinks? Okay, and that has to do with Archimedes' principle, and we're going to explain that later. Okay, but so here, it says, what is the formula for calculating pressure? Pressure, as it says in your textbook, is equal to the force exerted on an object divided by the area. So in the book, it says the force per uh, unit area or unit um, amount of space. So that's what it means. And so you can think of it this way, okay? The amount of force acting on the, the pressure depends on the amount of force acting on the object in the area that it takes up. And think of it this way. If somebody comes and pokes you in the back with one finger, okay, you feel that pressure a lot more strongly than if they came and pushed you with like a bunch of fingers. Or you can think of it. Actually, I'm going to explain this more in a minute, but uh, you will see in a second. And it says, what two states of matter are fluid? Okay, when we think of fluids, most everybody thinks about liquids. Okay, but fluids are a lot more than just liquids. They're also gases. The air that's around you and the air that you're breathing right now is also a fluid. Okay, so the states of matter that are considered fluids are liquids 
and gases. Okay, so sometimes you go to the doctor and you're sick and say, make sure you get lots of fluids. Okay, obviously he means you should be drinking lots of liquids, but just be aware that gases are fluids as well. But we're going to go over that in a minute. All right, so that's the do now. I want, to, I want you to take a minute and I want you to understand what the buoyant force is. So let's say we have a ball or something like this and it's floating in water. Okay, obviously the ball has some mass to it, so it has a weight. Okay, in the weight of an object, that force goes down. But what keeps that ball floating on top of the water is the buoyant force. Okay, the buoyant force is what acts upwards on an object that's submerged in a liquid. So this is the definition for the buoyant force. It is the upward force on an object that's in a fluid. And remember, a fluid can be a liquid or a gas exerted by the surrounding fluid. Okay, so... And uh, just so you know, let's say you have like, you know, you know, a hot air balloon or any balloon actually. Let's say we have a balloon. Okay, remember that the air is also a fluid, and so the weight of the balloon goes down, and the buoyant force goes up, and then there's also this air that's around it. Okay, so again, even though you know this one's in water and this one's in the air, the air is also a fluid, so the buoyant force would be up like this. And the weight of the object would be down like that. Okay. So, but you can uh, get this from the notes as well. All right. So, I'm going to go on to that. All right. So, right here is talking about pressure and the buoyant force. So, first of all, pressure. Again, okay, pressure is the amount of force exerted per area okay so that's the pressure okay equals the force per area the force divided by the area okay so the more uh well here it's are easier to visualize this way like let's say you have a nail okay and you put this nail on a piece of wood all the pressure of this nail is in a very small amount of space so here it says Circle the place on the nail where the most pressure, where there is more pressure when the hammer strikes it. Okay, that's going to be right there because all the pressure from this nail is in a very small amount of space. All right, and so the pressure is pretty great because the area is not big enough. Now, you can think of it this way. I'm sure most of you have jumped on the bed before. Okay, or on a trampoline maybe. If you stand with your feet close together on the bed or trampoline, the bed like sinks down more, okay? Because all of your pressure is in one spot or a small amount of area. But if you spread your feet apart, okay, the bed doesn't sink down as much because the pressure is spread over a bigger area. Okay, so that's what we mean by pressure depends on the force in the area. The greater the area, okay, the less force you're gonna be able to Put on the object like it might be you also seen people walk on a bed of nails like at a circus like if you try to stand on one nail okay the nails gonna go through your feet because you know your weight is gonna be all the pressure is gonna be in that one little spot okay but if you have a bunch of nails like you know like a little bed of nails okay if you step on it carefully okay you could probably stand on it without it going through your feet because the air the pressure is being spread out over all of your foot but if you one nail Okay, if the pressure's in one little spot and it goes through your feet. All right. Now, and we already went over this part. Says how to calculate pressure. Here's the formula here. Okay, pressure is equal to force divided by the area. Now, it says how does a fluid's height affect the pressure? Now, I want you to remember that a fluid can be either a gas or a liquid and you've all experienced this or some of you have if you've ever been swimming so let's say you're in a swimming pool okay and i've drawn this a skinny little swimming pool here if you're underwater here okay or you're underwater down here you're going to feel different amounts of pressure and if you ever been swimming in the deep end of a pool and you went to the bottom of the pool you can feel the pressure like in your ears or like you know around your head because look if you look here okay the height of the fluid depends on the pressure this person right here is not going to feel as much pressure as this person out here because look there's so much more water or fluid 
above this person's head. So this person out here is going to feel a greater amount of pressure. So the depth in the fluid that makes um, an impact on the pressure. So the deeper you are in the fluid, the greater the pressure. But remember also that air is also a fluid. So let's say you're on Earth. If you're down here on Earth, there's a lot of air above you. Okay, but let's say you're on top of a mountain. There's less air up here. Okay, so this person down here on Earth is going to feel a lot greater air pressure or the air pressure is going to be greater on this person because they're deeper in the air column. Like if you go up here, there's less air above you. Okay, so that's what we mean by when we say pressure changes with depth. Right here it says, where is pressure the greatest? At the top of a soda bottle or the bottom of a soda bottle? Okay, so it's going to be, again, at the bottom, because at the bottom of a soda bottle, if you put like a penny or something like that in the soda bottle, okay, it's going to be, if it's at the bottom, there's going to be a lot more pressure. Now, when the pressure, when an object gets submerged in a fluid, the pressure always acts perpendicular to the surface and so that's at a right angle so you can see here these arrows are showing you the direction of the pressure of an object that's submerged in fluid now right now you really can't feel it because it's always around you but there is the atmospheric pressure this is the pressure okay that is applied by air particles okay it's always around you because there's always air around this is the pressure that the air puts on your body okay now, let's see what this question says. It says, in the figure, why is the pressure pushing up on the bottom of the cube greater than the pressure of the surrounding cube? Okay, and so this has to do with, um, let's see. Why is the pressure pushing up on the bottom of the cube greater than the pressure from the bottom? All right, so this right here has to do, because it's because of the buoyant force. All right, and so even though all of this pressure or force is coming from every direction okay the greatest force is coming from the bottom is because of the buoyant force okay so you can just put because of the buoyant that's b u o y a n t f o r c e all right and here we kind of covered this before it says label the arrows as buoyant force and gravity okay so gravity we already know x down so this would be the force of gravity right here and buoyant force acts up so this one right here would be the buoyant force b-o-u-y-a-n-t okay now you also need to realize that the deeper you go in a fluid okay the greater the pressure we already talked about that like if you go deeper in a swimming pool Okay, it's the pressure is the greatest. Okay, but the whole the horizontal forces acting on the object cancel out because they're equal. Okay, so also that's also right here where it talks about up here. These forces here cancel each other out because they're equal, but also because of the buoyant force, okay, coming upwards also is why the force is greater coming from the bottom, because also the other forces co uh, cancel each other out. So we can also put that and the horizontal forces cancel out. All right. So we talked about the buoyant force and we've also talked about Archimedes principle. Okay. You should also know though that although the pressure that you feel on an object gets greater the deeper you go in the fluid, the buoyant force does not change as you go deeper. Okay, so no matter how deep you go, the buoyant force doesn't change, but the pressure changes. Okay, and that's because, um, as it says here, the difference between the upward and downward force remains the same. And we already talked about Archimedes principle here. Let me show you. I'm going to draw a picture here. Let's say you have a big boat. Okay. And the boat's here. And, that's not a, and it's sitting in the water. Okay. If this boat was out of the water, it wouldn't displace any water. But when, you, when this boat sits in the water, some of the water, okay, has to move out of the way. 
to take because of the boat. Okay. And Archimedes principle tells us that this water that moves out of the way, this water that is displaced, okay, Archimedes principle tells us that the buoyant force that sagging upward is equal. Here I'm gonna do it this way, buoyant force. Okay, it's equal to the amount or I'm sorry, the weight of displaced. This is not enough space, sorry. Displaced fluid. So let me break it down for you once again. The amount of force that's going to be pushing up on any object that's in the fluid, it's equal to the weight of the fluid that is displaced. So if you could capture all the water that was displaced and you could weigh it, that weight would be equal to the force of the buoyant force that's pushing up on the object. Okay, and this part of the reason that large boats can float but it's not the only reason okay and so right here where it says what determines the buoyant force acting on an object okay here it is the amount and actually actually here I'm, I don't want you to get confused I'm gonna put it's the weight because it's not just the amount, it's the weight of the displaced fluid. Okay, that is what determines the buoyant force that's acting on an object. All right, just to bring it home once again. Like right here, this is back when we talked about force. You see this guy standing on, this is on page 141 in the book. You see this guy standing on the sand, okay? His, the area that he's applying with his body just standing on the sand is not very much. So he's applying more pressure if he's standing like this. But if he puts a board under his feet, he's spreading out the area that he's applying his force to. And so in this case, he's not applying as much force because the wood is spreading out his the area that his force is being applied. And once again, okay, let's say you put a ball on the water, the weight of the ball or the downward force is counteracted by the upward force on the ball and then that is the buoyant force. Okay, remember that pressure acts in all directions on an object, okay, and it's always perpendicular to the surface. Okay, this is right here. Okay, this looked like one of my ex girlfriends right here. Okay, that's why I had that's why I had to get rid of her. Okay, she, okay anyway, uh, just kidding. Um, you can see here this fish right here. Again, the force is acting in all directions and it's always perpendicular to the object. Okay, but the net force is always going to be upwards. Okay, because these horizontal forces cancel themselves out, and the upward buoyant force is always going to be greater. Remember, Archimedes' principle tells us that. The buoyant force is equal to the amount of liquid that is displaced or the amount of fluid that's displaced. So look right here. These objects all have different densities. Ice, aluminum, and steel have different densities. But in this case, the buoyant force acting on them is the same because they're the same size and they're all displacing the same amount of fluid. All right. So that's pretty much it. You should be able to do your active reading notes to help reinforce what you learned and do the chapter content mastery since we've already done all of the reading essentials. All right, get to work.